This episode is brought to you by the Boneyard Huskies Club. The Boneyard Huskies Club empowers athletes while providing UConn fans with access to exclusive community, utility, and rewards. The Boneyard Huskies Club is excited to announce the next collection of student-athlete collectibles, which grant club membership privileges, will feature UConn men's basketball players, and drop on January 26, 2023. For more information, go to BoneyardHuskiesClub.com. That's Huskies with a Y-Z at the end. BoneyardHuskiesClub.com. All right, we're at about the halfway point of the college basketball season, believe it or not. So we're checking in uh, with some coaches around the state. So joining me today is the coach of Central. It's Coach Coach Sellers. Coach, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So halfway point, kind of, as I said, crazy to believe we're already there. I know it's going by so fast, man. It really has. Yeah. When you look back at the expectations you had for your team heading into this season, how do you feel like you guys have performed, you know, to this point in the season? Well, one of the things uh, we wanted to try to get better every day, every game, you know, it's, not, it's a cliche, but, you know, you want to do that. Um, so we, I think as a group, individually and as a group, we've gotten better every day. We just haven't got the results that we wanted as a team. You know, obviously we wanted to win all of our games and especially our non-conference. We had a lot of games that were our level type of games that we just came up on a short end uh, on a lot of close games. And it's just, it was really a frustrating time for us. We finally got over the hump and uh, I feel like we're trending in the right direction. We're, we're the arrows headed up with us right now. So you can see it in our practice and you can see it in our guys' body language and the way we approach every day. So it's getting better. I feel like just looking at your schedule in the non-conference, I mean, the teams you guys ended up playing ended up just being a really tough schedule. I mean, you guys go to UMass, you play Quinnipiac, who we saw just, you know, tear apart Rick Pitino and Iona the other day. Right. Uh, St. John's, Rutgers, uh, Fordham's had a good year. Maine's at the, you know, towards the top of the America East, St. Joe's. So what was it like putting your team up against such quality competition in the non-conference? And, and how do you think that's going to help you going forward here in the conference slate? Yeah, you know, we we were in, and, and like you said, all those, that schedule, we were in a lot of those games. Yeah. And uh, we, we were right there. And, you know, we come in and we watch film. We see our guys executing stuff that we were talking about on the defensive end. Our offense, the ball is moving a little bit better. Um, so as you go through that, don't get the result. It's very hard for the guys. And so we kept telling them, stay with it, stay the course. Um, we, it's going to turn for us at some point. And uh, to the credit to our guys, they have 14 really good character guys, character people. They, they come in every day. They work. Um, and, and it's been a rough go early on for them. And they kept coming in and working. And then at night, they come in and they get extra shots up. They want to watch film, extra film. So, you know, you just got to really talk about the character of our players that we have here. And we recruited good character guys. So we know we got the right people. And when you got guys like that, they're going to continue to get better. And as you can see, the last couple of weeks, it has turned for them a little bit. They, they played, we played better as a group. We've def our defense has gotten better, and once we've gotten in the league, I think it's going to that tough schedule with those ups and downs we had early on is going to just harden us up for our conference schedule as we go forward. Yeah, looking, uh, you know, at that conference schedule, just kind of playing around it in Ken Palm, it seems like the NEC as a whole is just really bunched together, and it looks like it's shaping up to be a really competitive league this year how do you feel so far i know you've had a few conference games under your belt but how do you feel about the league so far at this point in the season yeah i mean you know like when you talk to every time you play somebody you talk to the other coaches and we're all saying the same thing it, it's so wide open like anybody yeah. could win it um you know fdu's three and all and they they're really really putting points on the board they can score uh coach tobin anderson doing a great job with those guys um you know, Stonehill, the new the newcomers in the on the block, those guys are really, really good. Chris has done a really good job with yeah. those guys. So the league is just really open. You know, Rob Kremel at, at St. Francis PA, they've had like two really tough nail biters and they, they came through or uh, three games that are really tough and close down to the wire. And more of their freshmen has really stepped up for them. So the league is uh is I, I think as, as a group is really strong. And you can see anybody winning it at, at the down the stretch when we come down the wire. So 
you know, and I think everybody has a right to be excited because it's open. Yeah. When, when you look at your team and how they perform the day to date, uh, curious to get your thoughts on two sides here. One, what's impressed you the most about your team? And then as you look towards this, you know, second half of the season, where are you looking to see them improve a little bit? Uh, our half court defense has really impressed our staff altogether. We, we've, uh, we've, uh, Ab, Abdul Momo, you know, a, a lot of people probably say he's our fifth starter. They don't, mm -hmm. he didn't play much last year, but he's, in my opinion, like should be one of the guys, a defensive player of the year. He is great, not good, but great in ball screen coverage. He's a, a kid who, started playing basketball late, is so vocal on the defensive end. He's like in the top two, three in block shots in the league. But it's just his, his talking and his energy on defense and kind of being our anchor that's really, really been impressive and surprised, surprised the staff and surprised us. And it really made our half-court defense so much better so far this year. Um, the thing that we have to work on more is, and I call it, the guys hear it all the time, the in-between. It's not a primary fast break. It's not secondary. It's not half court. It's sort of in-between, and that comes with decision-making. Mm -hmm. And we have to make those decisions when when to go, when to pull it back, when to move the ball, when to cut through. Um, that's something we watch, we watch on film daily, and we work on it in practice every day. And it's, it's, it's part of the decision-making process uh, right before we get to that half-court offense. So that's what we're working on as a group. Our guys, we talk about it as a group. The guys talk about it all the time. And when we do it right in practice and in the game, you can see our guys all acknowledge each other. And when we get it wrong, they're talking about how to fix it. So that's something that we've been really concentrating on. As you, you know, look – you know, towards getting into the the heart of league play here. If your team's going to compete for the top, you know, half here of the league, what do you, what do you think you guys are going to need to do to to be one of those top teams? You know, come the end we, of NEC season. Yeah, we're going to have to defend. We're going to have to, especially transition defense. We're going to have to rebound the basketball, and we're going to have to get in that in between game where we make really good decisions in the. Uh, right before our half-court offense set takes place. We have to make better decisions on offense. If we can do those three things, then I think we'll have a chance to be in the top half of the league. Consist we have to do it consistently, obviously. I'm going to take a quick break from the interview to tell you about my friends at Martin Rosol's Meats. This fourth-generation Connecticut family business produces kielbasa, hot dogs, sausages, and deli meats using Martin Rosol's very own original recipes. Their products can be found in grocery stores, delis, restaurants, and hot dog stands throughout the state. And if you're looking for your fill right away, check out their retail store in New Britain. For more information, visit martinrosalsinc.com and go support a UConn fan-owned business. And now, back to the interview. I know when you when you took over this job, you knew that it was going to be a bit of a rebuilding project to get it back to the glory days that, that you remember at Central. How has this process been for you so far? You know, now a year and a half into things of getting this program and building it back and getting it trending in the right direction. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's been fun. I I, I uh, really glass half full, optimistic, happy guy. I have to try to force myself to get <laughs> mad at these guys sometimes. But uh, I'll, I'll wake up, you know, and like, man, we did this really well. We did that really well. I'm looking at all the good things we did. So we got to continue to get, we got to get better at this. We got to get better at that. We got to work on this. So the challenge of getting these guys to get better as a group individually, I love that challenge every day. I love uh, the way our staff and I, we work together recruiting wise and who we're going to pinpoint and, and the guys are going after. So, you know, you know, and at the end of the day, it's basketball. And I love, yeah. I'm a basketball junkie. So it's so much fun to go to work every day to get our guys better, to look at new guys that we're trying to add to our program to make it better, and to just deal, to talk to our, um, our donors and boosters. We do we try to do a Zoom call once a month with those guys oh. to give them a little update on how the, the, the team is going and we we we've been implemented having one of the players come on the Zoom call with those oh, guys. Wow. So it's been a lot of fun interacting with the with the donors, the boosters, the fans, the the students. Um, so every day has been a really fun day. 
And, and it's like, again, basketball on the court early on, it, it was been, a, we had a, a couple of rough weeks, but we got through it and we keep going and just looking forward to getting into this conference even more. What's the key when, when things weren't going well for you guys at the start of the season to, to keep guys motivated? Because I know it's easy to probably get down, you know, when you get off to a little bit of a slow start and you're not seeing the results right away. But w- what do you do to keep these guys motivated and, you know, get them ready for conference play where they've been able to get off to a good start here? You know, uh, Coach Wood, uh, associate head coach Ben Wood, he was a manager at UConn when I was there. And I've known him forever. And so the, the the six years I was there and he was there a little bit after me, we had so many uh, stories. Like, and myself, and myself, I've been to eight different schools. Yeah. I'm eight different schools. I went to China. I went, so I've had a million different stories. So I, I've, like, I will reach back into something that happened at UConn or something that happened in Creighton. Uh, we, we lost a tough game to Holy Cross and we're in the locker room after the game, and I go and tell these guys a story of something that happened when, in China, and it just it got their attention, and they were all like really into it or whatever. So that, that's one thing I, I'm I have a ton of uh, life experiences being around basketball yeah. for so long and different places. So I, I've given these guys a lot of different scenarios of different things that happen to people individually, different things that happen to team, different teams, and how they've gotten together and put it together and all of a sudden we turn something around. So uh, I've told a lot of different stories in those uh, early parts of the season. Yeah, absolutely. Well, coach, I really appreciate the time. Best of luck to you and the team uh, down the stretch here uh, for the second half of the season. Thanks, George. I appreciate it, man. Absolutely. Anytime.